Hello and welcome. My name is Cynthia Davis. The Arts and Education Council is excited to launch our newest initiative in partnership with the Missouri Foundation for Health, the Arts and Healing Initiative. This will be an informational workshop to provide potential applicants an overview of the initiative, the grant criteria, and all you need to do to prepare your grant proposal. This presentation will follow the proposal guidelines document. I will share my screen so that you can follow along with the PowerPoint. So, let's get started. The Grants and Programs staff consists of Jezere Jenkins, our Grants and Programs Coordinator, as well as Cynthia Davis, myself, the Director of Grants and Programs. This initiative will utilize the services of an external evaluator to assist not only the Arts and Education Council, but also to work with grantees to reach the goals of, and outcomes of the initiative. We have contracted with the University of Missouri's Community Innovation and Action Center. Additionally, we have convened a cross-section of experts representing a wide array of professional areas, including arts, health, behavioral health, veterans health, children, youth, social justice evaluation, research, grants, program development, education, academia, and project management. The charge of this panel is to be rep a representative voice of the arts and healing community by having an influence on how this initiative was constructed, how it will be implemented and reviewed. Names and affiliation of the advisory panel can also be found on the Arts and Education Council's webpage. The goal of the Arts and Education Council is to ensure our region is rich with arts and cultural experiences for all. Our mission is to build appreciation, participation, and support for the arts and arts education throughout the St. Louis community. Our vision is shaping a vibrant arts community for all. We were founded in 1963 as a United Arts Fund covering six, with a 16 county by state region. In addition to grants, we also implement programs such as our Executive Director Roundtable. This is a professionally led program targeted to executive directors and CEOs of arts and cultural organizations. Its focus is to support executive directors with peer exchanges and resource sharing through facilitated peer learning. The St. Louis Arts Award is our flagship celebration of the best of our region's arts community in an elegant evening of cocktails and dinner and awards presentation and performances. All proceeds benefit the Arts and Education Council. In 2012, the Arts and Education Council announced a major milestone in our rich history, the purchase of our first home, the Centene Center for the Arts. The first of its kind in the St. Louis region, the Centene Center for the Arts is an arts accelerator, which is home to 21 arts organizations. The Arts and Education Council Arts Incubator provides tenants resources to grow their impact by offering below market rent, shared rehearsal, event and meeting space, as well as technological infrastructure to all of its tenants. This is also where the Arts and Education Council offices are located. We have a 16 county Missouri and Illinois reach as shown here on the map. So the Arts and Healing Initiative began when a and &E was awarded a five year grant from the Missouri Foundation for Health. The purpose of the initiative is to improve the quality of life through the power of art for people throughout Saint, the St. Louis region. This initiative will be a shared process of defining arts-based healing. a and &E believes the arts have a critical role in improving an individual's well-being. Arts and healing can be an introduction of any art form to a variety of healthcare and community settings for therapeutic, 
educational and expressive purposes. Arts and healing is a proven benefit to patients, their families, and their caregivers. To anchor the initiative, Arts and Education Council will use this definition of healing. Healing is a transformative process of meaning, well-being, or wholeness that reduces suffering or other factors that contribute to a low quality of life. To address our present situation, the COVID-19 pandemic, please consider these factors when designing your arts and healing program. Consider environments where we live, work, and play. Also consider the effect this pandemic and other factors will have on immunosuppressed patients and arts and healing community. The timeline for the 2020 Arts and Healing Initiative can also be found in the um, proposal guidelines document. So the applications will open June 1st at 12.01 a.m. The proposal package will be due July 31st by 3 o'clock p.m. The pro pro panel proposal review will be held on September 14th with funding notifications on September 18th. The grant, start dates, the grant start date is October 1st. These awards will be one to two year grant awards for up to $10,000 maximum award. The program year begins October 1st, 2020. To be eligible to apply for the Arts and Healing Grant Funding Program, you must be a 501c3 nonprofit in Missouri or, and or Illinois or have a fiscal sponsor that is. You must have neighborhood and or community support, have a broad and diverse board of directors, reasonable board, board approved budget. Your program must incorporate healing and well-being with the arts at its core. And you must employ at least one full-time equivalent which we define as a minimum of 30 hours per week by staff, contract professional, administrative, or volunteer. So what do we know already? So like the arts, healing typically is undefined or used interchangeably with health. Healing is evolving and dynamic. We know that definitions and practices will differ across and within professional fields. We also know that different cultures have distinct healing practices and rituals. So therefore, our applicant organizations will vary widely. Many of the problems that will be addressed will be done using different program approaches and activities. So, since we know all of those things, what is it that we want to do through this grant program? With the Arts and Healing Initiative and through this grant process, our goal is to increase the capacity to heal through the arts. A couple of helpful resources, you'll find links on the web page and in the guidelines document to a heart arts and healing grant terminology document as well as proposal writing tips. The terminology document is a glossary of um, frequently used um, terminology used in the arts and healing grant guidelines. The proposal writing tips are general kind of grant writing 101 proposal writing tips but there's some pretty good tips in there, so take a look. The Arts and Education Council, in partnership with you, the applicant organizations, will reach our goal of increasing the capacity for arts and healing th uh, through the arts by supporting arts and healing programs that address four categories and outcomes. The categories are program capacity for arts and healing, relational healing, access to healing, and transcendent healing. Each applicant must address program capacity for arts and healing and one or more of the remaining three categories. 
So program capacity for arts and healing. Once again, all applicants must address this category in the proposal. This category seeks pro programs that are seeking professional development, equipment, or other resources that directly improve program sustainability and effectiveness. This is not intended for regular programmatic needs. So this is not a cost or an element that you need to do in order to run your program. This is to enhance. The goal is to improve program capacity so programs are more likely to benefit participants and lead to desired programmatic outcomes with long-term sustainable change. Relational healing, we are looking for programs that foster relationships within communities, families, and regions. The goal is to create, build, and strengthen and heal relationships within these structures. Under the access to healing category, we are looking for programs that meet potential um, participants where they are fiscally, emotionally, and artistically in their communities. We want to bring the services to them or make services um, accessible to those program participants. The goal is to close the gap in accessing arts and healing resources. And finally, transcendent healing. We are seeking programs that promote the alleviation or reduction of suffering or low quality of life. The goal is to provide support for traditional health care to aid in the holistic healing of program participants. So mind, body, spirit, the whole body. The Arts and Education Council converges around five elements of a vibrant community. However, for purposes of the Arts and Healing Initiative, three are directly related and must be addressed in all grant proposals. The first, build bridges between cultures. This is an organization's ability to promote cross-cultural understanding through increased availability to and access of arts experiences that include and represent all races and ethnicities. Next, energize communities forge connections. This is an organization's ability to show their commitment to improving a population's well being through the arts particularly those that are underserved and are revitalizing. And finally, enrich lives. This is an organization's ability to demonstrate how they deepen feelings of joy, engagement, and connection to the community by broadening participation in the arts. The final proposal section is the financial criteria and review. Each proposal must include a budget and a budget justification and financial statements. Your most recently completed fiscal year financial statements as well as your current year's projection. Financial information worksheet is a downloadable document from the online application. It should be downloaded, completed, and re-uploaded into the online application. The financial criteria is reviewed in a separate process by arts and education staff. So the proposal funding criteria, keep in mind, this is a competitive grant program. This is, each, each proposal will be evaluated based on the degree to which the grant category description and outcomes section are addressed and related arts and healing elements of a vibrant community are addressed. The application will be available June 1st, 1201 AM. This is an online application accessed through wisehive.com, our online application system. The application package 
It's due Friday, July 31st by three o'clock. Late applications will not be accepted, no exceptions. The online application system will shut down at three o'clock p.m. Central Time. So please don't wait until the last minute. So during the proposal review process, the arts and education staff will do a number of things. We will provide panelists with training, information and materials to ensure their ability to evaluate proposals effectively. We will inform panelists of um, the Arts and Education Council's policies and procedures since they are not arts and education staff. Also provide available objective information regarding applicant organizations to the panel, provide recommendations to the panel regarding an applicant's organization's finance, finances, and answer panelists questions regarding specifics about an organization, its mission, and or specific details about the proposed program. The advisory panel and the external uh, evaluator will evaluate each proposal to the degree to which the grant categories and outcomes and the related elements of a vibrant community have been addressed. The financial review will result in a grade of pass, cautionary, or fail. The descriptions for those categories can be found in the proposal um, guidelines. So here is our contact information. If you have questions regarding the proposal, the um, programmatic question or financial question, please contact me, Cynthia Davis, at my email address listed here, or you can find it on the um, webpage. Or if you have a question once the application is open on June 1st, if you have a technical question, please contact Jezeree Jenkins and her email can also be found here or on our website. If you have questions, once again, please email me or call me. Um, my number and email address is listed here. A live Zoom question and answer call will be held the week after the online application opens. This will give you an opportunity to get into the application and see what questions you may have. So I encourage you on June 1st, when that application opens, get in there, take a look, see if there are any questions you might have um, specific to what we're looking for or what kind of answers um, we might be looking for. If you cannot join the Zoom, please email your questions. The information, dates, and time of the Zoom calls will be posted later on our website. So thank you for your attention. We are we are very excited to launch this arts and healing initiative and look forward to partnering with your organizations to keep art happening in our region. Thank you.